time for this evening's episode of As It Happens. Uh, this evening's guest anchor is Mkuleko Shengwa from uh, the IFP. Just a reminder, of course, that his views are his and not those of ENCA. Guys, really, shape up or ship out. You can't continue like this. Honestly speaking, Order, your time is up. Take us serious. Good evening. I'm your host, Mkule Goshlinga, from the Inkata Freedom Party. I'm an MP and the IFP Youth Brigade's National Chairperson. But tonight I'm doing something completely different. This is a special edition of As It Happens, where politicians are trying their hand at news anchoring. You also get a chance to ask me questions, and the number to call is 011-759-6340, or send a video via WhatsApp on 082-884-6370. You can also tweet me on at Mkule or at ENCA. Please make sure you use the hashtag as it happens. But to start, I'd like to pay a special tribute to my comrade and brother, Sbuise Lamini, who was gunned down earlier this month. An outspoken critic of corruption, we believe he was killed because he was a man of principle who would not allow corruption to rear its ugly head in Zululand. He was my friend and he leaves behind a fiancé, a family, and an 11-year-old son. His family can be proud of the man that he became. The recent wave of politically motivated killings, and in some cases, intra-political killings requires of all of us to be introspect. We must try to live out the values of our constitution that we all adopted and agreed to uphold. Our country is in mourning. We have lost many leaders both in the IFP and other parties. It cannot be that we set an example for South Africans and especially our children for, of violence. Far too many have died and one death is one death too many. These killings must stop. Now I'm taking your questions from social media. Let's see and start with the WhatsApp questions. Do you think it's time? Do you think it's time you take over from Principal Teles? And this is a question from Nandi in Durban. Well, Nandi, thank you for your question. The IFP had a national council last year, and we have satisfied ourselves with the candidate whom we are nominating to take over from the prince when it does step down, um, and that will be at our next conference. We fully support Kurt Veleng Usini Klabisa as our presidential candidate, and therefore I do not think at this point in time I should be a candidate. Thank you very much, though, for your question. Much appreciated. Why is the IFP supporting Ngonyama Trust, which is taking away people's ownership of land? And this is a question from Sizwe in Pongolo. Well, Sizwe, the IFP is fully supporting Ngonyama Trust, not because it's taking away land, because it's not doing that, but because we believe that the Ngonyama Trust actually secures the land of South Africans and, and people, and we believe that expropriation of land of, on Ngonyama Trust would amount to nothing more than black-on-black -black disposition. In fact, it is our firm belief that Ngonyama Trust is in the collective interests of the people. Where are their shortcomings? Let's talk about those. But quite frankly, we cannot take away land from the people. And currently, the Ngonyama Trust Act actually gives land to the people. Would you consider the IF teaming up with the NFP? This is a question from Sipo in Dube. When, well, we as the IFP CIPO have continuously said that any arrangements for teaming up with anybody will be made after an election. The only thing I can say is that members of the NFP must come back home into the IFP. And the differences that we had in 2010, 2011 can still be resolved. And I do not believe um, at this point in time it would be in the collective interest for the IFP to preempt itself ahead of an election. We are going strong into these elections in 2019 and we wish all parties well and should it come to crunch time we'll engage with anybody including the NFP but quite frankly to my former comrades who had left from the IFP and joined the NFP all roads must lead home so that we can actually continue building a South Africa which we all want for our people thank you why is the IFP not attracting enough numbers of non-Zulu speakers and this is um, a question anonymous question well, we are working hard, Anonymous, um, to make sure that we 
have a national footprint which is satisfactory, a national footprint which is going to address the issues. Of course, at the same time, you must consider that money is the milk of politics. And at times, we are a cash-strapped party, and we may not be able to fulfill our um, hopes, dreams, and aspirations as we want. So what I would say to you, Anonymous, is that raise your hand wherever you are and join hands with the IFP. And when you are actually are available, come in, help us out, and be the champion of the IFP where you are, because I firmly believe you ask the question because you want the IFP where you are as well. Thank you very much. Good evening, Tabo. How are you? No, thanks, Chief. Uh, I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. And you? Good, man. Thanks, man. My question is big and short. Uh, I just want to under, I mean, to hear from you. How will the IFP survive without Oba uh, Mongo City Chilis? Because I can see that IFP is him, his IFP. Thanks. Thank you very much for that question. Well, I think Prince Butelezi has done one thing very successfully. He has groomed a cadre of leadership, including myself. We are young people in the party, and we are taking the baton forward. You will recall that at some stage I had the label of being called the youngest member of parliament. What that meant, I don't know. But fundamentally, though, it highlighted the fact that the IFP was investing in the youth and therefore investing in the future. So the IFP will survive because he is quite certain that he must invest in young people in future leadership. Thanks for your question, Tabo. Um, good evening and welcome to the show. Uh, hi. hi. Uh, my question is, the IFP supported land expropriation without compensation in Parliament, so, but you guys don't want the Nguanyama Trust land to be expropriation. Isn't that hypocrisy? Thank you for your question. Let me use the opportunity to clarify what happened in Parliament. No motion was ever passed for expropriation without compensation. But what Parliament did pass was the establishment of a committee which is going to look into the possibilities of expropriation without compensation. As things stand, the IFP does support expropriation with compensation, but we are open to ideas. We are open to new policy innovations, and we are discussing those um, in the party, and we'll do so moving forward. And I do not think that you can conflate land in the manner that you are in, including that in Gonyama Trust because what we are saying is we cannot have black on black dispossession and the land which is in the Ngonyama Trust is already in the hands of black people whom actually need more land. So let's build on those gains as opposed to taking away what is already in the hands of black people. Thank you for your question. And we now go to WhatsApp questions. Just want to say to you, you are, hand, you are handsome. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Nusipo from Wamashu. That's a much appreciated comment. And we'll take us to the break. Um, and yeah, thanks, Nusipo. <laughs> Stay with me. And after the break, my special guest, the Deputy Minister of Communications, will be interacting with me as to when data is falling. <laughs> 